It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's The Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. The show's 5.45 Live. Joe, let's take a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. You were downtown uh, for uh, the Amtrak meeting as the high-speed rail uh, had its big uh, ribbon sure cutting. Speaking of Amtrak, there was a car on the tracks the other night that held up a train, and of course, uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, co-op employees unionizing. We've got a series of interviews, footage from their Monday night board meeting, all that and more. Of course, the goal is to do it in 15 minutes or maybe less, get you out to enjoy this gallery walk weekend. So uh, if you've got the time, make sure you stick with us right here on 545 Live. been so much pain. There's flooding went everywhere. The water has to go somewhere. We're here at the corner of uh, Liberty and Broadway, Zuccotti Park. This is about helping other people. This is a movement. I don't say the word protest. It's been a lot of Vermont Yankee in the media lately. It's an important case for us to appeal and long fight, okay. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, this October, into October, Joe, October 5th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. You're looking at a little footage of uh, BCTV's 2011-2012 montage every year for our uh, annual meeting, Joe. I get to cull through every single local program that's been produced uh, on BCTV in the last year and try and seam it all together the in best of the 10 best. minutes or less. I got to debut that uh, this past Wednesday at the Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center where BCTV held its annual meeting, which included a series of awards as well. It was a great night. Uh, I know I had a great time, Joe, and luckily the cameras were rolling, so we're going to debut that on BCTV Channel 8 uh, next week starting Wednesday uh, at 12 noon right here on Channel 8. All right, let's jump right into our stories and uh, talk about the railroads. Now, uh, there's over a billion dollars going into railroads all up and down the Northeast Corridor. Somehow, Vermont landed itself uh, kind of at the top of that list, getting to uh, pioneer the way for a, a resurgence, we might say, uh, of the golden age of railroad. I've even got uh, pieces of a script here. Let's see if I can roll through it, Joe, if you kind of keep this rolling. It's thanks to a $52.7 million Recovery Act grant that Amtrak has improved speed, reliability, and service for its Vermonter train route. Um, that's an upgrade that features some of the Recovery Act's first work. Um, on hand at this uh, event we were talking about that happened uh, at the Brattleboro train station yesterday was uh, the Federal Railroad Administrator, Joseph C. Zabo, uh, the Rail America Chief Operating Officer, Paul Lundberg, uh, Governor Peter Shumlin, Senator Bernie Sanders, Representative uh, Peter Welsh, and the U.S. Transportation Secretary, Ray LaHood. They were all there for this, Joe. As um, was I. That's right. Uh, let's let's hit the clip first, and then maybe we can uh, just wrap it up. Talk a little Glad bit more about little. it. That was fun. Have the Secretary of Transportation in Brattleboro at this moment when we are making the upgrades that's going to launch the first higher speed rail in America is a great moment for Brattleboro, a great moment for Vermont. We've invested about a billion dollars on the Northeast Corridor. We're opening this section today, but this is a part of a much bigger vision for the, for the entire Northeast Corridor. All right. Well, speaking of uh, putting folks back to work, uh, Brattleboro Food Co-op employees are looking to unionize. Uh, our content specialist, Maria Dominguez, was at their board meeting on Monday. Uh, I'll turn it back to you, Joe. The local 1459 United Food and Commercial Workers Union, hoping to absorb union hopeful employees from the Brattleboro Food Co-op, has filed with the National Labor Relations Board to take the matter to a vote after the co-op board of directors opted out of voluntarily recognizing the union. Co-op General Manager Alex Giori chose not to allow for a community-sponsored secret ballot election after the board deferred the decision to him, adding additional weight to the UFCW. We're very excited about forming uh, hopefully a future partnership with the, with the co-op and that uh, gives the workers here an opportunity to have more of a voice and more input in the future of the uh, co-op and hopefully as a result of that shared mutual vision. Uh, we have a stronger co-op, a stronger workforce, a stronger community. 
There's a seven-day window following the filing for the union and the co-op to determine who will vote on the matter. If no resolution is reached, the matter goes to the Regional Director of National Labor Relations Board. There you go. Uh, now, moving on, Joe. Over $14 million is the uh, budget for the proposed uh, Brattleboro Police and Fire Station upgrades. Uh, we now know it's going to go to the town meeting reps to decide if a 1% uh, option tax will be the uh, method used to pay a portion of this. Um, we sat down with uh, Brat PD uh, Chief Gene Rin yesterday in our downtown studios along with town manager Barb Sondag to talk about, among other things, an open house they're holding tomorrow morning. That's Saturday, Ooh. October 6th from 9 to 11, where you can come check out their facilities. Here's Barb talking about that opportunity. Come and see our facilities. These are our facilities. Come and see them. Understand the, the, the problems that we have and also understand how great how great a care we've been taking of these facilities. Town Manager Barb Sondag talking about uh, taking a look at the current police station facilities and uh, hopefully gaining some insight into why new facilities are needed. Uh, it was part of an interview with Tim Johnson where uh, she sat down and talked to him about those needs. All the details on the upgrade uh, and the current status of the current police station will show in that half hour interview which debuts next week, Tuesday uh, at 6.30 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. Hey. All right, uh, I want to jump back to the train uh, for a moment, Joe, with a, a kind of fun little story. Speaking of that BCTV annual meeting as well, as we were coiling up the cables from that, looked out the window behind the Brattleboro Museum and Arts right. Center, and uh, what did we see here? But uh, a little, a wrong turn <clears throat> for a driver landed uh, a, a Camaro Oops. on the tracks. Now, it seemed a, a bit of a goofy, funny story at first. This uh, ended up, though, causing an hour delay in an incoming Amtrak train. So, um, but I uh, enjoyed, enjoyed myself a little bit looking at, you just don't see something like that every day. So uh, I'm sure folks on the train who had an additional first, hour uh, added to their time. Uh, probably were, didn't care for it that much. <laughs> at first, uh, it was my understanding that I was, uh, I was joking that he was following his GPS, but uh, as uh, we read later, we find out that uh, as he came down the hill, he was not from this area, driving a rental car. Uh, it was dark, it was rainy, and the gentleman looked and saw a sign that said parking this way and went this way, and he just went this way about 50 feet too soon. So, uh, No charges were found. But he won't do that again. Yeah. All right, moving on, uh, the Brattleboro Select Board at their Tuesday meeting passed unanimously uh, a policy on using social media um, to gain public comment. Uh, something that surprised me, Joe, that it was unanimously passed after months of heated debate. The policy uh, did get several uh, revamps at that meeting. I, I think I've seen some speculation since then as to what exactly was passed unanimously. I don't think that was clarified. And uh, I read that exact comment passed unanimously on I Brattleboro, but I'm not sure. I don't see any place where it says exactly what they passed unanimously. Good so thing we'll, BCTV, we'll wait to see uh, how that pans out, I imagine. Good thing BCTV had three cameras there live to um, capture that entire discussion uh, where they go through line by line and, and make the changes they felt necessary to pass this. Uh, that discussion included uh, member Ken Schneck talking about why these changes are needed. If a member of a board or committee goes on Facebook and starts posting, and uh, th that's a violation of this policy. So that is exactly why we need this policy. Ken Schneck talking at the Brattleboro Select Board meeting held on Tuesday about their social media policy. Uh, as I mentioned, Joe, check that full video out. Um, we don't have time in 15 minutes right. to really do justice to the intricacies of the policy that they did end up passing. Luckily, it's available on BCTV's video on demand at brattleborotv.org, where you can find all local programming. And we stream live as well. All right, uh, all I see there is Joe and Next on this here script. Let's put you back well, in the Well, let's go that way then. Next, this year, as part of the Sandglass Theater's annual Puppets in the Green Mountain Festival, which boasted 25 performers from companies spanning seven nations, Sandglass director Eric Bass got to debut a performance he wrote along with members of the Ballystock Theater in Poland entitled The Blackbirds of Ballystock, which chronicles the tragic history of the Jewish community in Poland from 1906 through World War II and the 1968 exiling on into, two, uh, in, uh, on into the present. At the play's New England Youth Theater performance last week, Bass talked about the inspiration for the cross-continental collaboration. <laughs> looking for the 
right materials. I had the history, but I didn't have what that history gave us, that period gave us, that could carry through the rest of the 20th century. Moving on, 25-year uh, Brattleboro Town Clerk alum Annette Cappy has taken home the award for Town Clerk of the Year from Vermont's Municipal Clerks and Treasurers Association. Our 545 Live senior news correspondent Catherine Turnis caught up with Annette yesterday uh, following her newfound acclaim. It was a total surprise. I feel very pleased and blessed and very humbled by this award. I have been here almost 25 years. It's a long time, but it's been a good time. It's gone by rapidly. And I hope to be here for a few years more. All right, a few notes before we wrap, Joe. Uh, I mentioned a series of programs coming up on BCTV next week, which include that select board meeting, uh, but we don't have time to go through all the details, so take yourself uh, on a little journey to brattlebrotv.org. Uh, where you can check out a schedule if you want to watch things live on Comcast Cable or watch them at your leisure and video on demand. Of course, it's a gallery walk, plenty of events out uh, on Main Street and the surrounding Brattleboro area. Get yourself down there if you're interested in art, food, music, and the like. That's about all we got, Also Joe. this weekend, Newfane Heritage Festival and the Dummerston Apple Pie Festival on this mm. Columbus Day weekend. So if the weather holds out, which it looks like they're saying p.m. showers both days, uh, get yourself out there for some apple pie, cheese, apple cider, and uh, arts and crafts. It's a great time at both of them. I've filmed them both before. And for those of you out in those areas, get on out and check them out. And if you're headed west up Route 9, there's the Marlboro Cider Sale as well, where members of their uh, Marlboro Middle School uh, go out, pick some apples, and then basically use a car jack to press some of the finest apple cider you'll ever find. Oak Meadow School in uh, Marlboro Cottonale Elementary Hill. School, yeah. Yeah, they are, Oak Meadow has a uh, open house this weekend, too, over in Cottonelle Hill. What a weekend. All right, that's uh, all I got, Joe. And as the time ticks down here, I'll just say thanks to everybody that makes 545 Live tick the way it does. Everybody that came out and supported us at our annual meeting, congratu congratulations to all our winners. Um, that's, that's where we'll wrap up for today. Why not? Come on down, produce to... your own show. You can do it too. BrattleboroTV.org's really got all the answers for you. All right, night, everybody. Feeling like I gotta take this camera in, it's getting soaking wet. And we have a commitment from Mr. Hatton, even though it wasn't on BCTV, uh, it is now. <laughs> Are you gonna ask me questions or something? Okay. <laughs>